How it goes, fellas. So, once again with the drafting. I was kind of upset with myself when I went to draft last week, too. I forgot my playmat. It's like, you know, I had all this stuff. I was doing my thing. Loaded all the stuff into the bag. Did it right here on top of the playmat. Forgot about the playmat. Yeah. Me, I'm smart. So, uh... Let's just get into these decks, shall we? Alright. <clears throat> First draft, I ended up with this white-red thing here. Uh, I got a lot... Th this this whole string of cards right here is all, like, control and removal type stuff. Uh, two Blazing Torches, uh, two Bonds of Faith, Abyssinian Priest, Into the Maw of Hell, two Skurzdak Cultists, a Harvest Pyre, and a Geist Flame. All well and good. Two butchers cleavers. Okay, like, hey, you know what? The priest and the cultists, both humans. Kid science, fun stuff. Uh, what else I got hanging around here? Uh, Bomb to heroism, traitorous blood, a reckless waif, two ashmouth hounds, a gallows warden, two cloistered youths, a mausoleum guard. Use the shimmering grotto amongst my lands. Um, I had an Angel of Flight Alabaster in here, a.k.a. the Ginger Angel. And I also had a uh, Heretic's Punishment in the deck, which actually ended up winning me a game. Kind of mildly surprised me, you know? Wasn't expecting that. Well, I wasn't expecting it. Um, there were a couple other rares I ended up with. The... Uh, the bird that mills people and uh, curse of something or other. Which curse was it? Curse of stalked prey. Didn't have room for that. Um, the milling bird, the one that gets big when you mill, you, you mill your opponent, and it gets plus X plus X, where X is the mana cost of the card you milled. I'm not Ryan Blue. Didn't have space for. It. And there was some crazy green rare. Whose name escapes me? Um, yeah, that was that was all uh, mostly sideboard. Like I said, the Heretic's Punishment and the Ginger Angel were in, were in here. Uh, my keeper was a Sulfur Falls, which is a nice little card. Put that up there. So let's see here, it's uncommon, uncommon. Those are uncommons. That's uncommon. That's uncommon. No commons. Those are commons. These are uncommons. Just sorting out a little bit because I don't think I need any more commons from this set. Just some uncommons and rares, you know. Uh, what else did I have here? Um, got the Heretic's Punishment back out of the prize pool. Yay. Uh, back from the brink, which is an interesting card, but I've yet to see anyone terribly abuse it. Blood Gift Demon. That's also something I pull out of the prize. Well, the rest of this stuff is all sideboard for this deck. Uh, an Ancient Grudge, uh, a Hanvir Watch Keep, uh, Geist Catcher's Rig. I, you know, I picked that. I thought there was a chance I'd end up main decking it, but I ended up not. Uh, Cellar Door. Blue Collars Bell, Wolf DD on that one, right? Those are all the comments. Uh, Mona the Unhallowed and a uh, Skeletal Grimace and a uh, Blue Collars Chant. Uh, made up my black. Nothing's too spectacular. Though, man, admittedly, the Mona the Unhallowed is a nice card. Just requires you to be going a little bit heavy on black rather than, like, you know, splash. Uh, Woodland Sleuth. Sleuth. Uh, Oldenwald Mystics, Gat Staff Shepherd, Orchard Spirit, a Prey Upon. Overall, good green, just not strong enough to be worth running, you know? And an extra moment to heroism hanging around. So. Now, just put this place aside for the time being. Second draft. I end up going blue-green. <coughs> kind of
kind of surprised myself a little bit on that one, you know? I didn't even have a lot of green. One, two, three, four, five, six, like seven green cards in the deck. Mostly blue. Mostly. Um, creature control, removal type stuff. I've got two ambush vipers, two claustrophobias, and a blazing torch. I've got two Oldenwald mystics. It's a pretty good card. Granted, it's only a 3-3 if he hasn't transformed. Your opponent doesn't want him transforming. People find 5-5 five, five regenerators to be just the tiniest bit intimidating. Uh, evasive creatures, or potentially evasive creatures. Uh, Orchard Spirit, Murder of Crows, two Delvers of Secrets, a Moon Heron, two Lantern Spirits, two Battleground Geists. Battleground Geists actually came in kind of handy. Um, a few miscellaneous cards. Demon Mail Hawbrook, Mask of Avacyn, a Think Twice, a Memory's Journey, more about that in a few moments, a uh, Bramble Crush, and a uh, Spidery Grasp. Uh, my most memorable game with this deck, I'm playing against a fellow named Rich. Good guy, really good player, knows his stuff. Um, game one, he had the um, Skurzdag High Priest on the board, and I could have taken it out with the Blazing Torch, but instead I decided to uh, take out a, um, a Typhoid Rat. Because, in my experience, whenever I've gotten a High Priest on the board, I couldn't make his special ability viable. Unfortunately, um, I should have taken out his High Priest when I had the opportunity, because he had the ability to make the High Priest's ability very viable. And I lost to 5-5 five, five Flying Demons. That, uh, that didn't thrill me. I believe it was Game 2 I took him down, all well and good. Game 3, he gets the Skurzdag High Priest on the board again, I drop a Claustrophobia on it, it's like, no, that thing's not becoming an issue. And, um... Because I didn't want to make the same mistake I'd made in the first game. I did not want to underestimate his ability to utilize the High Priest. And, uh, and then kick myself for it later, you know? So, all well and good. Things are going decently. We're still duking it out for board dominance. Uh, he drops the... Um, I can't remember what the heck its name is. The 1-1 Black Creature where you pump mana and sacrifice a creature to gain life equal to the uh, sacrificed creature's toughness. All well and good. He sacrifices the High Priest. And then f drops a Ghoul Caller's Chant to get the High Priest back into his hand. And I'm like, great, okay, fine. I'm like sitting there like, I need an answer for that. And I'm like, I hadn't drawn my Blazing Torch yet. And I'm like, I'm hoping at this point I'm going to draw into my Blazing Torch. <coughs> and, um... Draw my next card, and I'm looking at my hand, and then I start kicking myself, because I realize the Memory's Journey that I had in my hand would have done the trick. It's a Colson of Blue. I could have cast it. It's an instant. I definitely could have cast it. Target player. Well, actually, maybe it wouldn't have helped me, now that I look at it even closer. Target player shuffles up to three cards from his or her graveyard into his or her library. Yeah, so... It's the player who chooses what gets shuffled in. And up to three. They can choose none. So maybe that wouldn't have helped me. In fact, no, that really wouldn't have helped me at all. But I thought it was going to. But, yeah, you know... Oh, well. Oh, well. Meh. I'm still not happy about how that game ended, you know? Still... I did all right that uh, that draft. Um, pretty sure there's stuff. Uh, I believe I had a Sturmgeist in this deck as well that you're not seeing here. He got kicked into the prize pool. Bam. Yep. I also had a Heretic's Punishment in sideboard, a Devil's Play in sideboard, um, a Splinter Fright in sideboard. I just couldn't justify running in the Splinter Fright. And I had a uh, Mentor of the Meek in sideboard as well. He was like one of two white cards I picked up in the whole draft. And I opened him in pack one. I opened it in pack one. And, uh... Lo and behold, I didn't get another white card until pack three. <laughs> um, pretty much all of the white dried up real fast for me in pack one. Because... It, Two guys on my right were both drafting white heavy, so 
you know, I took that first pick, and I'm dead serious. Pack one, I don't think I saw another white card after that. Yeah. But, oh well. Prize pool, we're gonna have Heretic's Punishment, uh, Charmbreaker Devils, The Devil's Play was my keeper, and we just got sideboard stuff. I could have gotten, like, a miscellaneous jank foil out of the prize pool, but I'm like, skip it, I don't even want it. Uh, <coughs> what else we got here? Rolling Templar, Geist Flame. Oh, I, I could have splashed right if I really wanted to. I mean, I had the Templar and the Geist Flame and the, the Punishment and the Devil's Play. I could have gone with red, but I think the green really did serve me better. Uh, Inquisitor's Flail, Kinder Catch, Somber Wald Spider, Woodland Sleuth, Dissipate, I want to run, couldn't justify it. I mean, I can't really justify a counter spell unless I'm, I've drafted a lot of counter spells, you know? Uh, Civilized Scholar, I've seen, I've used him to good effect a couple of times. It's kind of nice. Uh, Dream Twist, Grasp of Phantasms, Forbidden Alchemy. And there's my second white card, uh, Voiceless Spirit. It's a brain weevil, don't know what that with that. Uh, Tortured Pariah, Vampiric, Fury. But, uh, yeah, stuff. Um, I'm thinking sometime soon what I want to do, call me crazy on this, what I want to do is just put together a video where I just talk about just the, you know, the general theory behind drafting. And I, I know I've talked about it here and there, now and again, a few times. But I think I want to, like, <coughs> just, just talk about the whole process in general. You know? That's, that's something for me to on the back burner, there's something to think about. Have this bit, try and collect some thoughts on it. Yeah, I know, it's a dangerous one, right? Ooh, actually have an agenda other than, like, saying stuff. Say specific stuff. Ooh, scary, huh? Alright, call this a wrap. Catch you guys another day. Have a good weekend, etc., etc. Later, fellas.